Welcome back to my vlog series where I take you along with me on my jobs and learn with me along the way. In this video, I'll take you on a couple of jobs where I replace a shutoff valve and move pop-ups out from underneath a new fence. You may learn things here that you wouldn't otherwise learn anywhere else, so come along for the ride. On the first job, the folks called because they had their property water turned off since they had a sprinkler valve stuck on and their sprinkler system shut off valve wouldn't shut off. When I got there, I found that the gate valve handle just spun, so it meant that the guts had broken inside. So the only remedy was to replace the shutoff valve. Okay, I have dug it up and I have confirmed that this shutoff valve is connected to this valve manifold. See the pipes are connected down there. I just had to be sure because when I shut this all the way off, there was still water to this. So that just means that this isn't, um, that this is busted inside, which was what I was figuring, but I just had to be sure. I've shut the water off and I've cut the assembly off. And if you need to push water out of a three quarter inch Schedule 40 pipe, you can use drip tubing and then put electrical tape on the end of it. And it will displace the water in the pipe. If you have to turn the water off at the street like I did at the water meter, be sure to turn the water off to the house because otherwise the water that's in the house can drain out and into your piping out here. Okay, I built the assembly before I stuck it on there and then I just dropped the whole thing on there. And give it about 25 minutes to dry. Okay, water's back on, everybody's happy, and now we'll turn the house water back on. And I'll put the bark back and we're good to go. After I got the water back on, I inspected their drip system per their request. I dug this out so that you could see the tubing here. This is another example of where they have looped the tubing around the plant. <laughs> For no good reason it actually starts you, you can see it here it actually starts over here with it. it's tied into the half inch tubing comes all the way around comes all the way around like this and then the emitter is right here there is no and they've apparently done that with all these there's no benefit in the loop around the plant because <laughs> the emitter is right here all you need is from there to here and if the half inch tubing is close enough, you can actually just put that emitter right on the half inch tubing. You don't need the quarter inch tubing. There's no magic in the quarter inch tubing. I like leaving the emitter exposed so you can inspect it easier instead of having to unbury it. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation system. Also remember the resources site linked below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in these videos. This next item was at another site. And right now I just installed this HFR here. It was, the valve assembly did look like that, but this is a drip line and it keeps 
blowing emitters and stuff so I put this on here and I've got this assembly ready but in this case I've got one inch schedule 40 and to displace it I've got a half inch schedule 80 riser with electrical tape on the end and this will displace the water and it just fits in there and stays in there on to the next job this fence was installed recently and the sprinkler heads were not moved so here we have one directly under the fence and it popped up and busted so now I've got to dig it up and move it out away from the fence. There's one over there I'm going to have to do as well. i have to move it. After the fact, it's quite a hassle having to work around this and deal with the tree roots at the same time that are down there. These should have been moved before the fence was installed. Well, it kind of lucked out after cutting through all the roots and rocks and getting this thing loosened up this is actually on a old-fashioned swing arm um, back in the 80s uh, that's the way we made swing arms we didn't have flex pipe at the time so we used schedule 80 risers and these marlex 90s so i'm just going to take this off and replace this with a new hunter pop up and swing this back around this way and in the process I'm kind of tightening things up a little bit and we'll put the new pop up on here set it down on this side of the fence and put it all back together and then I've got another one over there to do so here's the other one Fast way to rot out a fence. So I need to mark this. Okay, well, here's this one. You can see it elbows from there. And uh, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this, replace it with a new PRS 40 pop up and swivel the mill. Uh, swivel the Marlex down there so that it's on this side of the fence. Okay, there we go. It's all done. And this one's been moved. She said she had noticed this getting wet in this area. And I turned each of the valves on, really wasn't anything going on. I turned this one on and there was water squirting out this direction. And I could see that it was coming from underneath the anti-siphon cap here on this side so I unscrewed it and I could see that that o-ring was mangled it was hanging below down here like this and unfortunately we can't buy just the o-rings from Hunter so you have to replace the entire anti siphon cap which is a drag but so I'm gonna go get a new cap off the truck by the way, I did try to push that O-ring back in to the anti-siphon cap, but no matter how I tried to put it in there, it was so stretched and mangled right there that it wouldn't go in. I hope you learned some things. Let me know in the comment section below. The next vlog will be going over some coverage issues, and I'll show you why. Thanks for watching. See you next time.